Well, hello and blessings. I greet you in divine love. I'm artist Jay Buford, pastor of One Church here in Easley, South Carolina. On behalf of myself, my wife, First Lady Sharetta Buford, our first family, and the entire One Church family network and nation, we're so glad you're connected with us on today. Listen, it's hard to believe that it's been over four months since we've been able to gather in the physical space of 817 East Main Street here in Easley, South Carolina. But all, although we have not been able to physically gather, we're grateful that we've been able to virtually gather as we are right now. And one of the awesome things about being able to virtually gather is that we're not limited to time and space of now, but we're able to have the benefit to look back and see how God has blessed us and brought us. It's hard to believe that in less than 60 days, one church will be three years old. I know, where has the time gone? And as I think back on our humble beginnings there at Easley High School um, and where God has allowed us to be right now, I'm so grateful for his hand of protection and mercy and blessings that have been upon us, but also those partners who've connected with us to do the will and the work of God here in this community. And so on this fourth Sunday, I want us to have somewhat of a fourth Sunday flashback, a look back, as we look back at a service there that took place a little over two years ago when we were worshiping there at the high school. But before we do that and go into the word, I'm excited to share, to share with you a couple of upcoming opportunities and a couple of events that's happened. Although we're not gathered physically, the work of God is still moving and going forward. And so listen, on yesterday, we're excited that we were able to feed our community yet once again. It's the July 2020 edition of our Feeding the Community where our outreach team has led us once again in an effort to be the hands and the arms and extensions of God in this community to provide a hot meal for those who are in need that without any questions asked, all they have to do is show up and we'll give them a hot meal. And so we're grateful that we were able to give out hundreds of meals on yesterday. And the reason we were able to do that is because we have been faithful and you've been faithful in your giving and in your stewardship to God. We don't hide it that listen, one dime out of every dollar, our, our tithe from our tithe goes directly to our community and our outreach efforts. And because of that, we're able to feed hundreds of people every fourth Saturday right here at our physical campus and location. And so I want to thank you for your gifts. And as we go forth and worship today, I want to encourage you to continue to give. You know, there are four ways you can give each and every week. Uh, you're not limited to just giving on today, but any day of the week you can give either of these methods. You can give securely, digitally, and electronically via text message by texting the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 864-990-1306. Once again, as you see on the screen, you can text the word GIVE to 864-990-1306. Additionally, you can use the Tidely app to text uh, to give. Uh, all you have to do is just search One Church Easily and uh, we will pull up and you can give via the Tidely app. Just search it on either your Google or your Android or your Apple platforms. Additionally, you can utilize our website, www.onesc.online. That's one sc.online. Just click on the giving tab there and you'll be able to give securely, digitally, and electronically. And then finally, you can place your gift in the mail and mailing it to P.O. Box 789, Easley, South Carolina, 29641. We're grateful and glad that you uh, are faithful in your giving, and we want you to continue to give on today. But not only that, do we have our fourth Sunday, excuse me, our fourth Saturday feeding, but there's an awesome opportunity that is coming up Thursday, August the 6th. Listen, lean in close. I'm calling all teens, all teens, 13 to 18. We're having our first teen game night. It's going to be Jeopardy night is what we're calling it. Teen Jeopardy night. It's going to happen via Zoom, but this is what we need you to do. We need you to go to our website, www.onesc dot online one sc dot online you will see it right there as soon as you log on team game night click on that page register all we need you to do to register it's free of charge we're going to have some games we're going to have some fun it's going to be an enjoyable time for us to come and connect listen we believe that god is going to prosper us even in the midst of this pandemic 
and connecting with our teen demographic is one of those ways. We are being intentional to make an effort to make a space and give a voice to our team members. And so we're launching, we're using this as a platform, a foundation and a launching pad for us to move forward in a more effective team ministry. And so we need you to go to one sc.online and register for our Teen Jeopardy night, Thursday, August the 6th, just a little under two weeks away. It's gonna be fun. First Lady Sharetta Buford, as well as a team of others that have connected with her, they're putting together an awesome opportunity. I guarantee you don't wanna miss it. So have your teams register. And then once again, One Church, you know, um, as we have been worshiping virtually, we are meeting on Wednesday nights via Zoom, and we want you to connect with us on those Zoom meetings. We have a little mix and mingle is what we call it beforehand, play a little music, you can have some conversation if you want, but then we engage in an interactive Bible study at 7 o'clock p.m. And so I want you to be a part of that, but not just on Zoom on Wednesday nights, our Kids Zone is on Zoom beginning every beginning at 1145 every Sunday every Sunday from 1145 until 1230 our kids zone is zooming so please ma'am please sir log on connect continue to give continue to support the ministry and watch God do some awesome and wonderful things listen we've got some great announcements coming forth over the course of the next two weeks as we look forward to our third year anniversary our three year anniversary where the one turns three and we're gonna uh, be able to celebrate and worship God together once again as we look forward to how he's gonna bless our lives. We're about to go into this fourth Sunday flashback, but before I do, we're just gonna say a quick word of prayer, ask God's blessings upon this day, that he might be glorified, we edified, and the devil continue horrified. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity that we have to gather and assemble in this virtual space, this cyber sanctuary, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Breathe on us as we go forth into your word. Let us receive you, more of you, less of us, uh, that we might continue to be a light for you in this world, shining bright so that men might see our good works and glorify you, O oh God, who is in heaven. Thank you even for those who are going to give on today. Thank you for um, their free will offerings, their gifts, their tithes, their offerings, their seeds that they are sowing. Bless us as we seek to be a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're glad you're with us. Welcome to Worship at One Church. Enjoy. Amen. Into this chapter. Exodus chapter 19. My bass signal is going to go wild in a second on here. Exodus chapter 19. Over the course of the last two months, we have taken time to look, dissect, learn, and lean on the narrative of God taking his people out of Egyptian captivity as they have journeyed to the promised land. In May, we looked at what happened at the beginning. God provided for them. June, we jumped over the middle and looked at the ending. But in between the beginning and the ending is something very important which gave and gives insight to the reason they were not able to take possession of what God had promised. That in between him giving them ability to surpass every obstacle and opportunity, excuse me, obstacle and opposition, and in between them attempting to seize the opportunity are God's divine orders that are given to set in line how they are to live, to follow, and to freely flow with him. And so having already looked at the obstacles and the opposition, already looked at the missed opportunity, we're now for a little while going to focus on the master's orders. So Exodus chapter 19 gives insight to after they had walked out of Egypt, walked out better than they walked in. That's a shout already. Because for some of you, you're wondering why you're going through what seems like a period of persecution. But the good news is you're going to come out 
better than you went in. Okay, I ain't got that much to give today, so um, y'all gonna have to y'all gonna have to just catch it and go with it. Um, Exodus chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19. New American Standard Bible Version is the translation I'm reading. New American Standard Bible, NASB. The New American Standard Bible Version is translated into English from the original uh, Hebrew Aramaic text. You will find Exodus chapter 19 beginning, beginning with verse number 1. These words recorded. In the third month after the sons of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that very day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. When they set out from Rephidim, they came to the wilderness of Sinai, camped in the wilderness, and there Israel camped in front of the mountain. Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the sons of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians. And how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession among all the peoples. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that they, these are the words that you should speak to the sons of Israel. Verse 7, so Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all the words which the Lord had commanded him. He told them everything. All the people answered together and said, this is what they said, verse 8, all that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses brought back the words of the people to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will come to you in a thick cloud so that the people may hear when I speak with you and may also believe in you forever. Then Moses told the words of the people to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, verse 10, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. And let them wash their garments and let them get ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. You shall set bounds for the people all around, saying, Beware that you do not go up on the mountain or touch the border of it. For whoever touches the mountain shall, sh shall surely be stoned or shot. Excuse me, excuse me. Whoever touches the mountain shall surely be put to death. No man shall touch him, but he will surely be stoned or shot through. Well, the beast of man, he shall not live. When the ram's horn sounds a long blast, they shall come up to the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people and consecrated the people and they washed their garments. Then he said to the people, be ready for the third day and do not go near a woman. So it came about on the third day when it was morning that there were thunder and lightning flashes and a thick cloud upon the mountain and a very loud trumpet sound so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God and they stood at the foot of the mountain. We're going to stop right there. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord for this time. There's an to share together my brothers and sisters from this small portion of God's powerfully, powerfully printed word. I want to preach and teach that the spirit of God may govern and guide with this thought in our minds. The presence of the Lord in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray prior to preaching. Father, thank you for this moment. Uh, this moment that means so much. A small speck of a time frame of eternity, but so powerful in the perspective of the present that we don't want to mishandle this moment. Speak, O oh Lord, for your people are listening. Speak for your children are listening. Speak for your church 
is listening. Speak for the bridegroom, for the bride of your son Jesus is listening. The body and the bride of Christ are perched and prepared to receive what you shall proclaim and present in this place on this moment. So now God give us this day our daily bread. Give us meat from heaven. Give us bread from heaven. Give us food from heaven to feed our souls that we might be securely and solemnly and synchronized with what you have spoken so that we can walk in cadence with Christ. Thank you now, Lord, whatever we need to be for this moment of ministry, I ask and thank you to make me just that. If I'm too high, bring me down. If I'm too low, lift me up. If I have too much, take some from me. If I don't have enough, give me more. I just want to be right where you need me to be. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. In the presence of the Lord, we solicit your prayers on today. Our brothers and sisters, when we step into the scene of the text, Moses has already led the people out of Egypt. They've already crossed the Red Sea, already seen the hand of God move with might and majesty by giving water from a rock, by giving turning bitter water sweet. Now God is preparing to speak to his people that they might seize siege what he has prepared and promised to them and he brings them to Sinai. Exodus chapter 19 tells us that in the third month after the sons of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt on the very day they came out of the wilderness of Sinai. They came into the wilderness of Sinai. God had brought them back to a place that they would never forget. Sinai was not just any place, but it was a special place and would continue to be a special place through the history of the life of his people. Sinai was the place where God met his manservant Moses. Some translations don't have Sinai, they have horror. Same place, same power. They met the manservant Moses on the back of Sinai in the form of a burning bush to unfold to him his future that would erase his past and give him a new promise. Now he brought Moses back to that place in order to introduce the people to that place. Sinai would serve as a special place. It would serve as a special place where that prophet Elijah would come and receive power from Sinai. Sinai was a special place, but don't think it's something just significant only about Sinai. The point of it is, my brothers and sisters, God always has a way of bringing you to a place to make that place may be more than that place is by itself. Uh, God has a way of connecting his people and his people with purpose in special places because whenever God has a purpose for his people, he always has a place that that purpose is to be performed. Uh, okay, let me agitate you a little more. The reason that your life is in such agitation is not because you're not living in purpose, but it could could be that you have the purpose and the plan, but just in the wrong place. You could be trying to plant in a place and stay where God just meant you to pass through. You could be uh, trying to live in a place and dwell in a place that God says you are only supposed to be there just for a little while because wherever God has a purpose, he always has a place for that purpose to be produced. You still need a little more for that? Let me give you a little more. Jesus Jesus had a purpose, but his purpose uh, could not be performed in just any place. It had to be performed at the right place. So on a skull-shaped hill in the Greek called Calvary, also known as Golgotha, the purpose of the person was performed in the place so that when he was lifted up, he said he would draw all men unto us. He couldn't just go in anybody's tomb. He had to go in a bar Tomb. He had to go in a fresh tomb because he was going to give it right back. There's always a place for God to allow his purpose and his people to be performed. And here in Exodus 19, God is aligning his people not just with their purpose, but with the right place. This 
would be a place that God would come, here it is, and connect with them, commune with them, communicate with them, so that he could unfold for them his plan, uh, his purpose, and the place he had for them. They were headed to a place, they were his people, they needed to know his, their purpose, but the plan was that they would go to a place called Canaan to take possession so that they could be his own possession. We read it here in the scripture. God says for you, you're going to be my people. I'm making you my possession. You're mine. And if you're mine, then there's something that only I can give to you that you can't get from anywhere else because you're mine. In other words, if you're mine, then that means I have something reserved from you that no one else can give to you or get from you because I have put your name on it. Okay, you don't know that vernacular. Let me bring it to a little more contemporary colloquial. God has a blessing with your name on it, but the only reason it has your name on it is because he knows your name. The only reason he knows your name is because he gave you your name. The only reason he gave you your name is because you are in his name because you are his. And if you are his and he is yours, then there's something that God and God alone has for you that no one else can get from you or no one else can give to you. Did you hear what I just said? That God has something that's specifically, solemnly, and completely reserved just for you. Tap yourself and say, it's mine. It's, it, 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 it's mine. Nah, y'all ain't saying that right. I said, tap yourself and say, it's mine. And God's got something just for you. But it all comes with you living according to the plan, walking in his purpose, and being in the right place. It's in this place called Sinai that God was going to now come and let his presence be amongst his people. Don't miss this because this is major because now they would have the opportunity to experience for the first time as a collective community and a group the grandeur and power of being in the presence of God. For all the four years they had been living under a false lordship of idol gods and now the almighty God was going to reveal unto them the glory of his power and his presence they had heard about the Egyptian gods and seen their figurines and their figures but now the father of all creation was going to show them his sovereignty show them his supernatural power show them the power of his presence. He was wanting them to understand that being able to siege and take hold of the promise is not just connected to you being his people and not just knowing your purpose, but having his presence. That with the presence of God, there is nothing that is impossible or off limits to his people. They didn't even know it, but he had already shown it to them that they were not even prepared to fight. And the Amalekites came to fight them. God showed them the power of his presence. That as long as Moses was on top of the mountain with the rod lifted up and Joshua was in the valley fighting, that God would give them the victory. He had already showed them at the Red Sea when Moses lifted up the staff and the waters rolled up and they walked over on dry land. And then after seabed into a sidewalk when the Egyptians started pursue, he turned that sidewalk into a sarcophagus and killed all of the Egyptians. He already showed them the power of his presence, but now he wanted to show them the power of his presence for a people who would forever be able to be in connection with an almighty God. God wanted them to understand Yes, it's good to have good church. Uh, but what if you could have 
church every day because you're not concerned with going to church. You understand you are the church and so when you are there, God is also, I feel a whole lot better right now. God is wanting his people not just to experience his presence but learn what it's like to live with his presence. And so God now brings them to Sinai and sets the scene for him to show up. Because believe it or not, there's always prerequisites required for the presence of God to be received. Amen. I'm going to say that again. There's always some prerequisites. Okay, that's too much of a scholastic word. Ain't nothing but a $15 word with a 50 cent meaning. There are some things you got to do on one end before God can show up on the other end. So God, God, God has them, we touched on the last week on that first point. God has them first and foremost, my brothers and sisters, to acknowledge their presence by properly processing their past. God says, now that you're here at Sinai, I need you to not just know where you are, but also know from whence you have come. come on, man. Know where you came from. And not just where you came from, yeah, yeah. how you came from there. Yeah. Know where you are yeah. and who got you there. Yeah. Okay, get, get, get. Yeah. this ain't you for this Bible. Here it is. God, 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 God said to them, verse number four, Moses, verse number three, Moses went up to the mountain. <clears throat> God says, here it is. Thus say to the house of Jacob and tell the sons of Israel. We'll come back to that in just a quick second. Hit on high point. Here, verse number four. You yourself have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I brought you out on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. In other words, God says, Moses, I need for them to realize that where they are right now, they can get there by themselves. I know my voice, but this thing must not be on the way y'all respond. Because it, it, it must not have gotten past four four. Let me try it again. God said, I need for them to understand that where they are, they did not get there by themselves. Okay, you must not have turned it off and off. Let me see if I can get to the back of the office. And God said, I need for them to understand that where they are, they did not get there by themselves. That it was I that brought them now. It was I that kept them. It was I that lifted them. It was I that provided for them. It was I that made a way for them. It was I that kept them when they couldn't keep themselves. It was I that brought them to sleep at night. It was I that paid the bills. It was I that kept the car from crashing. It was I that was in the operating room. It was I that allowed the doctor's report to come back good this time. It was I that brought them out on the eagle's wings. They didn't just came out. They came out sorry. They didn't just get here by themselves. God said, let them know I'm part of And I got a funny feeling and a secret suspicion there's something in this sanctuary right now. You just had a flashback that when you look back to where you came from, you just glimpsed in the rear view mirror of the history of Because God had to let you know 
that to receive the promise, you had to walk in, in a new personality of things. It's not that what you did and who you used to be is changed. It's who you're going to be. Okay, I ain't got time to really unpack it, but let me give you give, give some y'all. He said, tell the house of Jacob and the sons of Israel. That's not cute, but if, if you don't come to church, you think it's two different people. But Jacob and Israel is the same person. Because it was back in Genesis, around Genesis 35, that God met Jacob at Bethel and changed his name in order to change his game. And the name change didn't just happen anywhere, it happened at Bethel. Bethel literally means the house of God. Here it is. It happened in God's house, in God's presence, that he received his new purpose so that now he could live through, through the new personality of the promise that God was calling him to live. That it's in the house of God that you're able to catch the fullness of who God wants you to be and how he wants you to live. It's in God's house that his purpose is revealed. And now God is doing it for his people. God says, I don't just need for you when it comes to getting in the presence of God. Just acknowledge where you are. Not just know who you are, he says, but, uh, excuse me, he said, I don't need for you to just, number one, know where you are by properly processing your past. It is, I need for you to know who you are. He says, Moses, this is what I need for you to do. I need for them, for me to come and connect with them, I need for you to tell them to consecrate themselves and prepare for my presence. In other words, get ready to connect with me. It's going to come to the curb on a second. He says, consecrate yourself. Go have them wash their clothes. And for two days, text simply just says, don't know a woman. Some go a little more graphic and says, no, don't be intimate with a woman. But in essence, the theory is don't indulge personally to where your carnal self takes over. Yes. But set yourself right to receive what I'm about to do in your life right now. I don't need you to get so caught up in flesh that you miss, that you get too contained and consumed by the euphoria of the flesh that you miss the euphoria of the Father. But I need for you to prepare yourself to be in my presence. He says, consecrate yourself. Here you go. Wash your clothes. And get ready to come. Some of y'all, 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 what, what do I got to do, Pastor? I wash my clothes every week, every month, whatever, whenever you wash your clothes. You know, dime, fluff, fluff and flow, whatever, whatever, whatever it might be. Here it is. Wash your clothes. He says, I need for you to understand that the garments that you don and the clothes that you wear, the garments that you wear, do not properly identify you as to who you are. Because like them, we too sometimes can get so consumed with labels that we miss, we make the label and the label does not make us. That's why, some of you can go to Goodwill, go to Walmart, go to the DG, ain't Dollar General, go to the DG, go to the F, go to go wherever you want to shop. And you wear something, put it on, and somebody else can win space, maybe 10, 15, 20 times as much. And they look at you like, hey, what you where you get that from? How you wearing that? It ain't the label, it's the thing that the label is. It ain't the label on the bottle, it's the wine on the inside. This is, this is, this is vintage here. This is, he says, he says, we're watching, we're watching this. Washing, what does washing do? Washing removes the residue 
of your past so that you are clean for your future. I'm just holding it down and say it one more time. Washing removes the residue from the past so that you are clean for your future. The reason some people are mad at you living out the promise of your future is because you went through God's heavenly laundromat and you no longer have the residue of what was but you're now clean for what will be. Washing, here it is, it doesn't change the clothes. It just cleans the clothes. So that when I spilled mustard on the pants yesterday, after I wash them tomorrow, you no longer see it. So the stains of my yesterday don't follow me into the promise of my tomorrow. I'm trying to help somebody because what God is trying to do is remove the stains of your history to give you a new possibility and a promise. But here it is. You have to be willing to go through the process of consecration to wash yourself and to wash who you are so that he can change who you are and change where he wants for you to go. I got to go. My time is running. So God tells them to consecrate themselves and wash their clothes. Wash their clothes. Because when they come before my presence, I don't want them smelling like what they've been through. Because when they leave, they're going to have a scent of me on them that's going to carry them to where they're going. I'm going to show it to you. Um, um, there, there, there's, a commercial going, there's a commercial coming out. There's a commercial that's out. Uh, I, I think it's time or something like that. Fellow, y'all might have seen the fellow. He walks in the office. Um, uh, he supposedly had went to a doctor's appointment, but the fellow walked past him and talking about he smelled like a steakhouse. And if your, your clothes are telling on you, you to, in other words, they said you haven't washed good enough. In other words, you still smell like what you where, where you have been, even though you're not there no more. That residue is still on you. So here, so although you are saying that's not where you were, the smell, the smell of you is telling something different. And God says, here it is. I for them to wash and prepare themselves because the scent I'm going to put on them is going to be better than the scent that they have come out of and I need for them to be clean because too many smells mixing up will smell like a mess instead of smelling like a mess. Oh, that's why, okay. Oh, so some of y'all trying to act fancy. Come here, let me get you. That's why you got to be careful. You can't mix too many scents. Uh, you can't put this scent on top of that scent. On top of that I want you to do. Uh, 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 get in position for me to show up, but you're not going to move until a sound happens. Okay, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me give you this. God says, wash your clothes. Consecrate yourself. He says, and I'm going to come down in a thick cloud so that the people may hear me speak and they'll believe in you forever. Lord says to Moses, go consecrate the people. Tomorrow, verse 10, that will get ready on the third day. Here it is, verse 12. You shall set bounds for the people all around. Beware that you do not go up into the mountain or touch the border of it. For whoever touches the mountain shall surely be put to death. No hand shall touch him. So whoever dies, don't, 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 don't y'all try to touch him and save him. Because they were hard headed and listen to the Lord. They, 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 they just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you know, treat them. Too bad. So try, try to help. Try to told you. See, you should, should do what you're supposed to do. But they should surely be stoned and shot through. When my beast of man, they shall not live. Here it is. Verse 13. When the ram horns sound a long blast, they shall come up to the mountain. Moses went down from the mountain, told the people to consecrate the people and wash their garments so the people be ready for the third day. Don't go near women. So it came past on the third day, verse 16, when it was morning. There was thunder and lightning flashes and a thick cloud upon the mountain and a very loud trumpet sound. 
so that the people who were in the camp trembled. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Here it is, knowing this. Moses, God, God said, Moses, I need for the people to understand that once they prepare themselves and position themselves, once they prepare themselves, there's a position and a posture that I need for them to be in, to meet me. But the meeting can't occur until a sound is set in the atmosphere for the two to connect. He says, so um, get them ready. Once they get ready, go to a certain place. And once they get in that place, I need for them to stay in that place until I let them know to proceed. And the way they will know to proceed is when the atmosphere is set with the sound that comes from on high. And so most got them ready and went and they were there. Boom, thunder and lightning. They heard the sound. Then they could move. Because, here it is, when we are striving to get in the presence of God, we have to understand, so simple is going to message, there are steps to proceeding in God's presence. Just like grandmama told you to dust your feet off, clean your clothes, Wash your hand before you go in the pots and in the kitchen. You can't just run all the way out and run all the way in without some steps because God is a God of order. I'm, 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 I'm taking time to teach you this in this series. I told you that from the start. Because what we want is to go from zero to 100 without passing through two through 99. And God says for you to get to where I want you to be, there's some steps. There's a process. Let the church say process. process. There's a process to get into my presence. What's the process? The process is shake off, get rid, remove everything that you had been through, the washing. Prepare yourself and position yourself in the right place. Listen for a sound and then upon the sound, be prepared to follow the directives that come after the sound comes forth. Say it again. Shake off, clean, cleanse, wash what you used to be, what you used to do, everything that happened past. Get ready and position yourself in the right place. Position yourself in the right place with anticipation and listen. Listen and wait for a sound. Once you hear the sound, then you can keep on stepping. Try one more time. There's a reason. It's a method of my madness. Get rid of everything that was on you. Wash your clothes. Get to the right place. But you get to the right place, get in the posture of, expect of expectation, listen for the sound. When the sound comes, then you can proceed. You can't proceed until you hear the sound. You can't, the sound won't come until you get in the right place. You don't need to get to the right place until you have positioned yourself by removing what it is that has gone from you. Some of you said, Pastor, that's nice. I don't know. When were you going with this? Come here. Now let me bring it to life. When we come into worship, praise and worship is the washing. It's the washing that helps remove the residue of everything that we have been through. It's the word of the Lord. 
Jesus and them to move forward. Moses prepared them. God says, Moses, are you sure they're ready? Moses said, yeah, God, they, 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 they're ready. He says, I need you to make sure they're ready. Here it is, because when they get in my presence, it's not going to be just about a shout, a good time, a rolling on the floor and a fall out. He says, but when they get in my presence, watch this, he says, I'm going to give them instructions for the future. Yeah. It's not so they can be hungry now, that, that, that's all called praise. He says, but it's I'm going to reveal unto them what my plan and purpose is. You know why we strive to have the presence of God in this place? It's not so that you can hear my voice. It's so you can hear So while you're in here, he can download unto you things from heaven because he hadn't been able to get your attention like that throughout the week. So now that he got you here and he's brought you here, he says, I need for you to hear me. I need for you to listen to what I'm telling you. Testimony is we get him to worship, God tell, talks to us. You step out of 19, going to 20 and 21, 10, 11, 12 chapters. God is just talking. Talking. Moses, tell him this. Moses, tell him that. Moses, I need for you to build this. Make it this tall. Make it this wide. Moses, put this there and that there. Put this one over here, put that one over there. In other words, when we get in God's presence, He will put our life in order. He'll reveal to you who needs to be close. Who has gotten too close. He'll tell you when to go and what to do. What not to do. Don't do that. Don't hang with them. He gave all of that to Moses. The blueprint for the tabernacle, the, the, the plan and the pattern for the priest's garment, how they were to travel, what they were to do, all of that. But it happened when they connected and communicated with God. The more you hear his voice, the more you know his voice. Someone who you talk to every day does not have to tell you who they are on the phone. I don't have to call my wife and say this is ours. The sound of my voice identifies who I am because we communicate in relationship. God is maturing his people to get to the place where we can communicate with him and know his voice in relationship. So that you don't have to wonder who it is that said that. Or say something told me. Oh, I heard, but you can know that it was God. As you stand to your feet, God is, God is cultivating colleges. <laughs> to get to a place to hear his voice. As we prepare for prayer, my prayer is that you will be able to hear God's voice. Sometimes it takes us cutting off all other sounds so that we can only hear his sound. You ever try to talk on the phone in a noisy place? You yelling in the phone and they're like, I hear you. You just came in. All this music and stuff in the background, you're like, ah, ah, oh no. Because there's too much noise.
noise. It's too much in your ear for you to hear. God is, is maturing us as believers. This, this, this ain't no baby food. Amen. No baby, this ain't no little data brand dime devotion. This is meat for us to chew on. Because what it does, it takes the responsibility off of God and on us. We love putting it on somebody else. Man, it every time I get ready to get in, somebody get in before me. I can't you know, get in this good or blame it on somebody else. I ain't got nobody to bring me. I ain't got nobody to take me. God said, okay, let me remove this use. When it comes to just me and you talking, talking. What's the excuse now? What's the excuse? It's time for us to mature as believers and take responsibility and get real with God. Every heart pray. Father, we thank you that in this moment you have given us meat to chew. Believers of yours to grow and mature in the faith. God, as we understand, it's been you that has brought us. As we use the model that you prescribed to your man Moses to try to better align our lives with your word, we, we cancel out all of the all of the voices so that we can hear your voice. Speak, oh God, so that we can hear you with clarity. And then after we hear you speak, give us the strength to respond to what you've spoken. Let the conversation not fall void, but let it be filled with purpose and let the purpose be performed in what happens after the prayer. Father, I pray for open ears of your people that perhaps even in this moment, in this week, today, in the days that are to come, that maybe for the first time and maybe some for the first time in a long time, I pray, God, that you will let your voice come through clearly into the ears of your people. I pray that your people will hear you clearly. Father, you're forever speaking to us, so as you have spoken through your word and even speaking through this personal time of prayer, allow the Holy Spirit to be the cleanser to clear out the clutter that causes us not to be able to hear what heaven has to say. God, now, as you speak, you touch the hearts of your people. Those who do not have a relationship with you, I pray, oh God, that if you're moving on them in this moment, that upon the completion of this prayer, they will respond to what you have requested and they will come and connect with you in relationship, first and foremost with you, through Jesus Christ. God, for those that you might be moving and speaking to them for connection and membership to this and partnership to this body, we thank you for that, oh God. Now, Father, what our earthly words have been unable to articulate, let your precious Holy Spirit still speak on our behalf that he might make intercessions for us. We thank you, God. I ask that you'll hear the private prayers of these your people. Hear from their hearts and their spirits as they talk and communicate with you to be the connection. And Lord, allow us to forever know your voice. Let it become familiar to us. Us with you and you with us. I thank you now. Those that are standing in the need of of the miraculous, oh God, we still believe that you are a miracle working God. We believe there's nothing impossible for you. Your word tells us that to those that believe, they should be able to see signs and wonders. So God, I believe it on today. 
I believe that I shall see miracles even in 2018. And it shall happen. And it can happen in the life of your believers that are here right now. <clears throat> Move, oh God. Touch, oh God. Make it happen. And we stand in the posture of anticipation and expectation of what you're going to do. We love you and we thank you and we praise you in advance. We don't wait till it's done, but we praise you even right now before it's done. Believing that it is already done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Wow, wow, wow. What a word, what a word. That was a worship. A hallelujah, good time we had in worship on that Sunday that we are also able to enjoy and have again today. What a word from God. I pray that you are blessed by that word from the Lord. And listen, if God came and touched you and connected with you in a way um, that really truly meant something today, I want to hear from you. Do me a favor. If you have not given your life to God and you want to deepen your relationship with him, there are some instructions that are right there on the screen. I want you to text the word save s-a-v-e to 864-319-3190 text save 864-319-3190 and we'll connect with you additionally one church we want to make sure that you're staying connected so as we've been saying each and every sunday make sure that if you're not getting regular communications from us then that means that we have a wrong number for you or a wrong email address and so do me a favor text the word one o-n-e so that same number, 864-319-3190. That's one to 864-319-3190. Well, our time is almost about up, but listen, God is not done with us yet. He's still awesome. He's still doing some great things. And parents, I want you to remember that now our Kid Zone has a new time that they're meeting, 1145 on Sunday morning. So once you once we disconnect here, Go grab a snack, some juice, take a little bathroom break and then jump on right on to Zoom uh, so that they can start the lesson at 1145. Don't wait till 1145 to log on. Log on a few minutes early uh, so that you can enjoy a little fellowship time. Log on early so that 1145 our kid zone can start engaging our younger members uh, right there on a level that is conducive to their learning and understanding of God. We're grateful for the opportunity we've been able to share together on today as we prepare to depart from this space of sharing but never from the presence of God let us ask God's blessings on our time together let's get the final blessing father thank you for this opportunity we've had to share and and to connect in the cyber sanctuary in the cyberspace in this way of technology bless us now as we go forth let us go with you let us go in you let us walk beside you let us never walk in front of you let us follow you as you lead we love you and we thank you. Your blessings upon your people. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest will and abide with us now, henceforth and forevermore. Everybody put in the chat together. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, we love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Go with God and God with you. Until next time, be blessed and see you again right here at One Church.